Hi everyone, welcome back to Calvary Kids Connect. I'm Teacher Phoebe and today we have an excellent video planned for you guys. But before we jump into all that fun stuff of the memory verse, worship and praise, a teaching about God's word, and the puppet show, we have to jump in with the word of prayer to get our hearts and our minds right to get ready to enter into worship. Everyone, bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today, Lord. We praise and we thank you and we bless you, Lord, that you give us this chance to be able to watch the video here with our friends, Lord, to learn more about you. We thank you for giving us this chance, Lord, and giving us a chance to learn about you and to be your children, Lord. Lord, we ask you to open our hearts and our minds for the deliverance of your word and that you speak to us today, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, let's move on to that memory verse review. Hey guys, so now we're going to learn at the memory verse review. Now, I'm not very, hmm, I haven't memorized it yet, but if you haven't either, go grab your Bible right now, and let's start reading from the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Acts, chapter 1, verse 8. Let's read it one more time to really get it stuck in our brains. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Now, wow, isn't that an amazing verse? Now, this is what Jesus said. It's in red, so it's important. The whole Bible is important. But he tells us how we're going to receive the same power that he has, the Holy Spirit within him, is going to come upon us. So remember, guys, be confident in the Lord and remember that the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. And if you ever feel sad or lonely or scared, remember that Jesus is with you always and through the Holy Spirit. Now let's move on to some worship and praise. Awesome job practicing, guys. I saw you guys trying your hardest out there. Remember, if you have the memory verse memorized, then come on down and send us the video. We would love to have to post your video here on the YouTube channel to show some of the students memorizing. If not, that's okay. You can still use your Bible to practice along with us. Now let's move on to worship. John 8:12. Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me. 
addicted to clap. My hands, cause I got the joy, I like to clap. My hands, cause I got the joy, I like to clap. My hands, cause I got the joy, I got the joy of the Lord in my heart. I like to shout, shout. Cause I got the joy, I like to shout, shout. Cause I got the joy, I like to shout, shout, shout. Cause I got the joy, I've got the joy of the
Well, I hope you guys had fun <laughs> worshiping and praising our Lord Jesus. Now, let's hear about God's Word. Hello, everyone. Looking forward to getting into God's Word here with you today. Before we do, let's go ahead and pray. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to study your Word, Lord, and just ask the Holy Spirit's with us, helping us to understand and helping me to teach, Father. And Lord, we thank you for the gospel. We thank you that the salvation that thank you for salvation offered through your son jesus christ that it's available to all people lord in jesus name amen so today we're going to talk about the apostle peter sharing the gospel with cornelius who was a a greek roman i'm sorry a roman centurion um so the verses we're going to read today are acts chapter 10 verses 1 through 6 verses 11 through 15, and verses 34 through 35. So let's start with Acts 10, 1 through 6. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian Regiment, a devout man and one who feared God with all his household, who gave alms generously to the people and prayed to God always. About the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius. And when he observed him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? So he said to him, Your prayers and your alms have come up for a memorial before God. Now send men to Joppa and send for Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodging with Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the sea. He will tell you what you must do. So an angel came to Cornelius, who was a Roman centurion, and told him to go seek out Peter, who was an apostle of Jesus Christ. So in verses 11 through 15, it says, I'm going to start at verse 9, actually. The next day, as they went on their journey and drew near the city, Peter went up on the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. Then he became very hungry and wanted to eat. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven opened and an object like a great sheet bound at the four corners, descending to him and let down to the earth. In it were all kinds of four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and birds of the air. And a voice came to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything common or unclean. And a voice spoke to him again the second time, What God has cleansed you must not call common. So Peter had a vision of a sheet. Imagine a white bed sheet like one in your house. And on the sheet were several different kinds of animals. Now in the Old Testament under Jewish law, uh, there were certain animals that the Jews were not able to eat. God said that they were unclean. For example, a hare, a pig, uh, something out of the sea that didn't have fit or yeah, that did not have fins or did not have scales are just a few examples of things that God said were unclean. But God's basically instituting a new um, a new law or a new thought to Peter, or a way that he wants Peter to, to act from here on forward, is that there is no distinction anymore. There's nothing unclean. God's made everything clean. And what he's basically telling them is, of course, he's telling them that for food, that the Jews can now eat those things. But in addition to that, he's saying that there's no, that even though the Jews are God's chosen people, the gospel came, and Jesus came not just for the Jews, but for all nations, which we see in other parts in the Bible as well. So Peter learned that. And let's see what happens next. Um, verses 34 and 35 says... So this is after um, Cornelius has sent some men to Joppa to go find Peter. And then in verse 34, it says, Then Peter opened his mouth. No, I'm sorry. Let's rewind a minute. So Cornelius did obey God and sent those people to Peter's house. The men approached Peter's house, told him what had happened. And Peter, having seen the vision that he had already, understood that God was telling him that the gospel is for all people, not just the Jews. So Peter was faithful to what God had him do and went back with those men uh, to see Cornelius. And then it picks up in verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, In truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality. So he's not showing favor to anyone, any people group. But in every nation, whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. So Peter 
preached this to Cornelius and Cornelius had invited all of his family and friends over to hear these words. And in, in response to the words that Peter shared, these amongst others, uh, Cornelius and his family and friends, many of them were baptized and believed in Jesus Christ had been saved. So that's that's kind of what we're intended to learn from this lesson today is that um, as Christians, there's no group, whether it's a nation or people or just people that maybe we think are not cool or poor or all these different things that are not worthy of salvation if they believe in Jesus Christ. Uh, and that's what God's called us to do. He's called us to go share the gospel with all people. And because God knows we're all sinners and all in need of salvation. And anyone who believes in Jesus Christ and the sacrifice that he made as forgiveness for our sins will be saved. So that's good news for all of us. And we should all go forth and be faithful to what God's called us to do. And just go share the gospel with others in our life. And in the hopes that God will use that to bring about salvation in the lives of others and uh, just be and that we're faithful and obedient in that way. So uh, that's our lesson for today, guys. Let's close in prayer. Father, thank you so much for your word, Lord, and just pray that you'd help us to go share the gospel with people in our lives, Lord, that you'd give us the words um, and the confidence. We know that you're the one doing the work anyways, Lord, to go tell tell our friends and family and others in our lives about Jesus Christ, Lord. And we're just so thankful for the peace that you give us that surpasses all understanding. We're thankful that we have salvation through Christ and allows us to have eternal life with you. And uh, just pray you continue making us more like Jesus Christ each day, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, we'll see you later. Thank you, Teacher Chris, for giving us God's word today. Now let's go on to a puppet show with Monica and Ryan. Today is the day where I get to show off my cool rollerblading moves at the, to the whole school. Monica, are you ready for the school rollerblading day? Nope. In fact, I'm going back to sleep. Wait, why? I need you to be there so you can build a crowd around me so I can do my new flip on the rollerblades. Well, I guess you can just ask one of your friends to do it since I won't be there. Do you not want to go because you'd rather roller skate instead of rollerblade? Because I understand roller skating is fun, but once you make the switch to rollerblading, you'll never go back. No, that's not why. Well, then, what's the reason? Well, Sally's going to be there. Sally? I haven't seen her in a really long time. What's your issue with her? There's no issue at all. It's just that, do you remember how her family lived on the other side of the world to preach the gospel? Yeah, they moved back here last year. Of course I remember. And yeah, it was really cool that her parents did that and that she was able to experience that as well. But last week when I was talking to her, she was making it seem that she was a better Christian than me just because she went across the seas. Well, you know that's just not right, because all fall short of the glory of God. I know that's what the Bible says, but it's hard. Sometimes she even questions my salvation and asks me if I'm really saved because I haven't preached the gospel around the world yet. Well, that's just absurd, because the Bible even talks about how the church is like a human body. If you have a bunch of hands, then who's going to be the feet and walk? Everyone has a different purpose in the church, and maybe you just need a reminder of that. It's a great thing that she went across the seas to go preach the word, but not everyone is meant to do that. And maybe that is your calling, but ultimately we just have to follow God's plan and see where he puts us. That's very true. Hey, that kind of reminds me of a Bible verse that we learned in Sunday school. It was in Acts chapter 10, verses 34 through 35. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, In truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, whoever fears him, works righteousness, is accepted by him. In this chapter, 
It was about when Peter had a vision and God revealed to him that salvation was not only for the Jews, but for the Gentiles as well. The word of God is for everyone, and so is salvation. Yep, just like salvation is for you too. God doesn't care about what we can do for him. What's important is if we receive salvation and just have a willing heart to follow. I guess you're right. I will definitely be sharing these verses with her. Well, that's great news because I have a new trick and that involves me flipping over your head. Oh no, don't you even think about it. I will not have you try to defy gravity when I don't even know how to rollerblade. It's too late. I got the ramp and I'm gonna roll on. Well, I'm gonna tell on you, Mom! Not if I get down there first. Thank you, Monica and Ryan. I hope you friends had a good time here with us at Calvary Chapel, Ontario. Remember, on Sundays, we are back here live with the fully operating kids ministry. So if you want to bring the kids down, come on down. If you're not feeling too safe yet, or if you live somewhere really far away, we will still have this resource available for you. And everybody, please keep an ear out and eyes out for the VBS advertisement. Because we will be preparing for VBS, we are going to need servants. And we're also going to need you guys, our friends, to come join us here for VBS. Now, let's close out in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today, Lord. We pray that your word doesn't go out void, Lord, because it never does, Lord. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your love, Lord. We thank you that you're all-powerful, Lord. I pray for each one of our friends here that is watching this video, Lord, that you protect them this week, Lord, and that you bring them back wanting more to learn more about you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye, everybody. Have a blessed week.